Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. No, you want to do the opening? You can go ahead and do the opening. Go ahead. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of What a Horse. My name is Jerry Williams, and I got the professional man himself. Jerry Harris. There you go, shooting BS right <laughs> off the bat, trying to trying to get something started. We, we're going to have a good show today because we're going to be talking about these inspections. That's the reason I wanted to do it. But first, I want to ask everybody to pray for Jamie Lawrence's granddaughter. They're they're on the uphill. <laughs> they're getting better and better. So that's a good thing because yes. that young lady has gone through a lot. But everybody continue to pray for. Her. And God, God does a lot of good things. He, he works in mysterious ways. That's it. Now you can, you want me to or you want to? You can do this. We'll be right back after we take this short pause for our sponsors. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And J.D. Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book, too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro. 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry. World Grand Champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000. Or select Amateur Show Pleasure World Grand Champion El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these World Grand Champion stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another world grand champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. Welcome back. Um, I do have some announcements. Okoe Spring Fling, 19th and 20th, that's this weekend in Cleveland, Tennessee. Contact Bill Daltry, 423 836 3607 start time is 6 p.m. Chad Adams, Keith Blackburn, and Claire Hankins will do the judging. Next week, this week, we also have, no, that's next week, we have the Rack and Horse Breeders Celebration. It's going to be at uh, uh, Shelbyville, Tennessee on Celebration Grounds, April 24th through the 27th. Contact Marissa Dawson, 256-353-7225. Start time's 5 p.m. each night. Judges, Ryan Parker, Amber Zan, Chris Zan, alternate judge, Brent Carter, and Dale Watts. Then the 26th and 27th, this is going to be a lot of fun. Bedford County Ag Center in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Contact Carol Missile 9, 919-437-6597. Start time is 4 p.m. each day. Judge will be Jennifer Bingham. Want to remind everybody, they put in a couple additional classes. One of them is a youth 
part performance class. Uh, I think that, that's that, Carol's always a step ahead. Oh yeah, trying mm -hmm. to make sure that she covers all her bases. Yes, and they always do a great show. They have a great show. They're going to bring back their food vendor this year that serves all that good stuff, peaches and cream and all that. Oh good. man, that's I know where to find you at when I'm looking for you. I'll be under the tent. You'll be under the tent. <laughs> I'll be there somewhere. I'll be watching because they do a great job. There. They really do. Uh, I tell you what, this week we, we need to talk about the lawsuit, what's going on in the inspections, and I want to remind everybody that the only way to fight a bully is to stand up to the bully. And we all know what the government's doing. We know what the USDA is doing. We know that the horses that these trainers are bringing up are compliant. That's why they hunt, they part hairs, they do everything they can to find the least little thing that they can call out. And if they can't find anything, they invent something. Now the Horse Protection Act says that we're supposed to inspect a horse before any show, exhibition, or sale. I have not seen anywhere in there where it says we should inspect them after they show, sale, or exhibit. And I do believe that the only time that they actually look at a horse after one of those events is when they show. Yes. And they do it to where they can create another problem. Uh, it's just, it's beside me why they were supposed to be put in their position to help and assist the walking horse industry. Now, isn't that right? Oh yeah, that's right. That's what it's supposed to be. Well, that old thing said that, the old saying, when the government shows up and I'm here to help you, you best watch out because you <laughs> fix and get stuck. Just like that. Now, they, if you have to part hairs and pull hairs apart to find something that you can claim is abuse, then you've got a problem with what the definition of abuse is. But they, they do it all the time. They, they come up with different excuses, reasons, and if they can't find something, they'll, they'll just invent it. Yeah. I mean, they've done it more than once. That, uh, and now, I was told that they went to a Saddlebred show, walked around, looked, asked some questions, uh, did not inspect a horse. But they have continued to say that we're the only breed that has to be inspected. These other breeds don't. There's only one problem. They've never inspected the other breeds, so they don't know. Yes, you They are. don't have data. And I do know that uh, from what I saw on Facebook and heard from some saddlebred trainers that called me and a saddlebred farrier that called me and a saddlebred owner that called, they don't like the, the government asking them questions. They don't like them videoing. They don't like them telling them they can't have them chains on the back feet. They don't like them telling them they can't have these wraps. They, they don't want them to have the bungee cords. Welcome to our world. <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. But here's one other thing. Until the saddlebred goes through what you're watching right now, this type of inspection, then there is no way that they can be compared to what the walking horse goes through. Yes. They've got to go through the same thing and just a little video and a little eyeballing from here to there. That ain't data, buddy. All that is is a cover up and a, I wish we had done this before. You, you know, my biggest thing of it is, Jerry, is like this. And I'm not saying all USD is bad. But you got certain ones that goes overboard. You know, as long as you do your job and like you're supposed to do it, I mean, that's all you, that's all men can ask for, or whatever. But now, when you go overboard and and create things like you say that's not there, then you, you know, you're taking a little too far. There's a word for the jury that's called targeting. Yes. Now we know that there's a couple of those VMOs that th they come with a sole purpose 
of turning horses down, whether they deserve to be turned down or not. And then if you argue with them, they want you suspended because you didn't agree with them. Even though they were wrong and they knew they were wrong, they still want to make an example well, out of you. Anybody that's check a horse or do any judging or whatever should be biased. You should not have a, a something against a, a certain type of horse when you go in and check it because if you have a, a problem with that type of animal, you're going to find anything in the world to turn it down on or do whatever because you don't like it anyway. I just like if you go to a, if you're a football fan and you go to a basketball game, you, you're you anything they do, you, you, you're going to be disagreeable. No, with. no. You know, well, that, that's the same way with this. You know, if you got people, I think the people that's over the, the government or whatever, you need to, they need to do background history checks on whoever they sent out to do this. Well, like I that. think they do that. I think, and Jerry, in all honesty, I believe the USDA goes to the Humane Society of the United States and says, who should we get? Now, I truly believe that. I believe they, they are guided 100% by the Humane Society of the United States. All you got to do is look at who's the Secretary of Agriculture, Vilsack, look at what his wife does, did, who she was connected with, then look at who they send in here to inspect our horses, and look at their background, look at their, their uh, portfolios, just look at what they did before they worked for the USDA. Yeah. And it's pretty obvious now that they were selected for a purpose. And it's it just like if, if, you want, if, if you want somebody to plow your field, you'll go get somebody that knows how to pull a plow. You know, That's what they're doing. On a lot of this stuff right here, it's just like if you was, if you know at these shows the government gonna be there and you're gonna have an inspector, you are not gonna try to do anything to break the law or whatever. You know, I just like you going to a speed trap and you see a state troop up the highway, why would you speed and you know he's going and he's there and you yeah, see, you him, see him. <laughs> you see him there. So why would you, you know, why would you do that? And I just don't understand. I just Well, but, Jerry, you're not supposed to understand. I mean, to be honest, they don't care if you understand or not on what they're doing. They it's like a guy that says there's a scar here and only three cells thick. That's the dumbest thing anybody could ever say. It was stupid. It was a dumb remark from the word go. And we continue to run into it. They, whatever they say is supposed to be 100% true, whether it is or not. And they do it over and over again. They don't care. They, they will call horses out and then try to create the reason. And if the reason's not there, then they'll change it. Now they've come up with inflammation. Well, Every time I jog or get on the treadmill or whatever, when I get done, there's going to be inflammation. Period. And they know this. Yes. They use it. They use it for that purpose. That's why I'm waiting for them to do the same thing to the Saddlebreds, the Morgans, the Posifinos, every one of them that uses any kind of action device, pad, whatever. They've got to inspect those horses like they do the walking horse, or it's just a sham, which more or less it's a sham anyway. Them pretending to do something that they know they're not doing. The only thing I can say is, is the, uh, for them to be untruthful. That, that's what gets me more than anything is if you cannot be truthful, then there's a problem. Yes. And, and from what I've seen, they're incapable of being honest. There's one or two of those VMOs that will honestly check your horse correct, but you do not see them that often. And here lately, the only ones that I've seen are the ones that are not going to do it the proper way. They're not going to be honest about it. They're going to be unethical. And those are the ones that they're sending to the to us this year, so far. And one other thing, used to, you could go to their website, and you could see the violations that they found at the previous show that they were at. I've looked 
for the trainer show, for the Philadelphia show, for the fast showcase, none of these, none of them are listed. The only ones that are listed are from 23. So that tells me now they're trying to hide what they're doing this year. Yeah. So if, if you can't be honest, you know, that's all I'm going to say about it. If you can't be honest, but he, here's an example of a, a field scar. Now, th this right here is a scar, supposedly. The only problem is you can't see nothing. But now they can. They can part a hair, and they say, well, this hair part's right here, so there's a scar right here. There's another example. Hair all over the place, but yet there's scars in there. Then you've got this right here. Nothing on the foot, nothing there, but Lord, what's that right below the knee? Oh, they soared that horse up here. Now, what kind of statement is that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's bull crap from the, and, and I'm saying it, it's bull crap. It's them trying to create something that is not true. Simple as that. You, you can go look at our horse's condition, Jerry, and and j just like when we did the other day, we we did the video, got CJ to do it, of the horse's feet to show what kind of condition they was in. And it's just unreal. There's a horse right there. He's nothing but a big baby. But now you leave it up to them they may look here, he does not wear a tail brace, didn't like it, so we don't put one on yes. him. So now he, he show pleasure. But now here's the condition of his feet. And he's the one that before he goes to any show, he's inspected by an equine veterinarian that gives him the once over. And if the equine veterinarian who makes his living inspecting and treating horses, says he's ready to go, then he's ready to go. If he says, nope, he's not to go, then he's not to go. But a lot of people don't think about how y'all train. I've watched you train and not use action device. I've watched you use the stockings. Yes. I've watched you use everything to keep the action device off the horse's feet to where they can't say it. I just don't understand how, and a lot of trainers do that. A lot of them, they cart them, they do everything in the world to take care of their feet. And they still say, no, nah, no, nah, you abusing, you abusing. They're saying that now because they can't find no abuse. And that, that's what really peeves me, is that they have to con Well, it aggravates everybody on stuff like that, you know, it just, I mean, that's the, that's the whole biggest thing. And I think that's the, they go is to get people discouraged and everything but, else. You well, know. if they can, if they can get everybody upset, and especially if they can scare the trainers and the owners in not to not taking a horse, yeah, then th th they've won because they say, "Hey, we we bullied them till they won't show the horse." I got news for them, and I know you, you've told me you felt the same way. My horses are not abused. They're going to the show. They call them out. Then when we go to court, I've got proof that an equine veterinarian that can actually work in the marketplace and not be hired by a government to tell them what to find out. But here's another thing that I'm upset. The foreign substances. What we can put on our horse and what we can't put on our horse. Yes. Right here's an ointment, Corona, that is done to take care of a horse. It's manufactured and put out by Manor Pro. There's another one that's used to protect the horse, help the horse. But yet, if we get caught using it, it's a federal ticket. Yeah, and you know, and them things right there, and, and all them is, is sold at all of your horse supply places, what? tractor supply, you know, any place, even at Walmart, I Walmart see, sells some see, of it. See, sell some of it. You know, and you, they're not going to sell something that's illegal. No. And stuff like that. You know, that's not approved. Well, now, they, all that stuff you see right there, they tell you that 
It's foreign substance. Yeah. Well, what was it? One girl, they, they caught her putting Shoshin on her horse. Said, you can't show the horse. That's foreign substance. You know, why would you, if you can't use that stuff, why would you sell it? Yeah. I mean, what's the sense? It's, I, I have emailed Manapro and asked them why their substance is illegal or considered harmful to a horse. That's something that I think is a legitimate question. If we can't use it, why, why does the government allow them to sell it if it's harmful to animals? animals. And you know, and the other thing about that is anything that you have to have prescription for, you yeah. have to go to a veterinarian to get it, a veterinarian have to use. Right. That stuff there, if you, can, if you can go to Tractor Supply, uh, one of them stores, and you get shots, like um, any kind of shot is behind a glass case, and somebody mm -hmm. have to come there and open that case. Right. Because it's got to be something wrong with it. That right there, you can go and pick it out anytime you want to. It ain't have no, gas, no glass case. You don't have to ask nobody to open nothing so you can mm -hmm. get in there to get it or yeah. whatever else. I mean, it, it's not harmful. I've got a medication that I have to show my driver's license when I get it. That's right. And I found out the other day, if you get lighter fluid to start barbecue, you're supposed to show your license. Lighter fluid for your cigarette lighter, yeah. you have to show your license. That was at a, a Dollar General. I asked him, I said, what's that about? She says, you buy it, we have to have it. Yeah. I'm talking we got to have it to, to buy stuff like this. It just it just doesn't make sense. But any other stuff you have veterinary use only, yeah. you know. But now that stuff they don't have that on it. So that must and you put all that stuff that you showed on there. You put it on with your hand. That's it. So hey, we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. <laughs> During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live full guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee walking horse champion. The Tennessee walking horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee walking horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee walking horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee walking horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. <laughs> All right, we got some other things we're going to go through because there, there is a lot of when people are training horses, everybody, a lot of people think they just run out there and put a big stack of pads on them and throw an action device on them and say, We're ready to go. Yeah, they have no earthly idea where it starts or. This is one thing I like what you do. This uh, let's go look look at this right here. Here here's Jerry now. The, he's got a saddle on, but now he does not have pads. And now explain why you do that. Well, I just do it what you call groundwork. You know, kind of get him used to when you get up on him. You know, where he'll know how to guide. Kind of similar when you pull back on both sides to put pressure on both sides of the halter. He'll and say, whoa, he'll know what you're talking about instead of getting on him and, and rodeoing. You know, right. I'm, I try to stop mine from bucking, you know, <laughs> and I, you know, and just try to teach him something. And pretty much a lot of your older type people, that's what they've done. They broke horses that way, you know, done a lot of groundwork first before you get up on them. 
Now, I'll be honest, Jerry, when uh, I was working with Toby and we were breaking coats, they just brought him in and slapped a saddle on him <laughs> and, and the rodeo was <laughs> on. It was completely different than it is yeah. today. But now that was that was true because I, I rode him for Vic Thompson too, and uh, hey, well, let's put it like this: I wouldn't do it today because I yeah. don't bounce like I used to. But our horses don't buck like they used no, to. No, they be. don't. And the biggest thing of it is, you know, I'm training that horse. I'm breaking that horse, not to. I'm breaking that horse to be a broke horse. You know, now if he turned out to be a performance horse, a flat shot horse, or whatever, you know. So be it, but I'm breaking him to ride for anybody that can ride. And if you can get one to do what you want to do on that ground at voice command, it helps him a lot, especially when you got an amateur. Well, he he does he's doing good. Yes, I know. And that's had, the first time I've done that. You know, put the saddle on him and put the rope behind him. Hmm. You know, so I mean, he's he's responding real well with it. Well, it just takes them time to realize what's going on, and yeah. once they do, they. They pretty much get her done, but now he's turning and everything to me. He, he's doing that good. Yeah. Here he is in the stall. This is an honors stud coat out of a deal for real mare. And them deal for real mares are turning in to be some good, good. I believe they are. Mares. They are turning out. This coat here is very smart. Got, got a lot of good movements to him. And everything, you know, I mean, they're real laid back, and I, and that's and that's good for a lot of horses when you first start him. You know, he got enough guts to him to keep going and moving forward yeah. and stuff like that. But he's not, you know, climbing the walls he likes, and he, he likes jumping all over the place. <laughs> well, he's very sensible. He, yes. he knows when, when I come, he's got that head strung out. He's ready for a. A, a biscuit. Well, I think all of yours know <laughs> when you come, Jerry. They know the sound of your car. They go sticking their head out the door. They, they understand when I hit the button to lock it and it beeps. They say, here, look, here come the treats. Here come the cookie man. Mm. And now, I tell you what, I, I, I have high hopes for him. We just had his feet trimmed. But there's a lot more to it than what people think. Oh, it is. Isn't and that, that's the reason I wanted him to see that, because it, it's important. Another thing that I wanted them to see that I really think is, is important is mare and foal care. Yeah. And uh, I will say this, I am very, very happy and pleased with the way you and Krista Gillum took care of this baby. Because people, this baby, he couldn't get up. His legs were too long. He didn't know how to use them. But Jerry Williams slept with that coat for what, three nights? Yeah. Bottle, but, bottle fed him during the night. Krista came, took care of him. And then before long, he's up there nursing, getting it done. But now he's got a set of legs from here to New York. Oh yeah, he does. But you know, the thing of it is about these animals, it's something that you got to really love. And you know, and for a lot of other people say how we abuse these animals and how the things that we do, you know, you got to love these horses. And I mean, it ain't just getting up and just riding them and, and going on. I mean, from day one, like this one right here, you know, I couldn't sleep at night knowing <laughs> this baby couldn't get up like he's supposed to. So I know I had to stay there and do what I had to do to take well, care of it. It's, it's important. And you can see now, you know, from the time we was holding him up and feeding him, you know, for three days straight, laying down, you know, he's up moving and, and everything else. Yeah, he's getting he's getting the job done. That's right. Jeremy kept talking about he kept going to the correct side to where we get good video. Yeah. He, he, that shows he's a show horse. That's right. He want to be showed mm -hmm. off. Good springy coat. Use his legs real good, you know. And like you were saying, them, I think them deals may are going to make some good room mares. I, mean, I do too. Do. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm very well satisfied with with mine. Now, I'm, I've got two that, well, I've got an armed and dangerous and a, and a then I got a deal brood mare. But uh, I'm thinking that according to how we work out, if we sell dancing dollar yeah. or dancing lady, to, uh, uh, as a trail horse, or if we make a, cause she'd make a good show mare in flat yeah. shot uh -huh. division. 
But I mean, but that's what I'm saying. But them, but them mares make some good, some brew mares. Hey, I, I'm, I'm tickled with mine. I can't say enough about it. Well, I tell you what, we've, we've looked at the start. We've looked at the baby being born. We, we've done all that. So now let's go to the past showcase and watch some performance horses. That'll work. We're going to get there, I think. Yeah, we are. Here's Jose's hell of a view in Caress Heinemann. That belongs to Tommy and Nancy Mills. Tell you what, her mother was tickled with this. This was reserved, but she made one heck of a show. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and she's gonna she's gonna be winning some, so they might as well get ready for that. That that's a good mare right there. That is a good mare. And Tommy is a, a real that's a real nice family right there. Oh, they are. They're yeah. super. I enjoy talking to both of them. Tommy got a real nice place he's fixing oh, yeah. out there on 231. Now right here, this is who I am. Trail Pleasure now, three and under. This was reserved, but he came back and won with Chad. Yeah. Wonder when Chad's gonna let Scarlet ride. <laughs> you reckon that's gonna happen? I don't know. He might. Well, right Chad. there was a reserve, and then here comes Chad. <laughs> I tell you, I love that horse. Oh yeah, that's a nice horse. This is who I am. I'm very proud for Chad to have a real good horse like that. You know, Chad been in this business for a long time. Yeah, but he's a heck of a ball yeah, coach, Yeah, he too. is. Mm -hmm. he, he won an award. I forget what it was, but uh, I remember seeing where they, they honored him with an award. That he, he just a super good guy. And here's Mr. Heisman and none other but Bruce McDonald. Your classic horse. That's two classics right there. Oh, yeah. The horse and, and the rider. <laughs> Bruce and Robin McDonald. That's I seen where Robin was out and about. Yeah, that's a nice horse. That horse been been a good horse for a long time. Oh hey, he's a, and he's something else now. And and Bruce, you know, hey, uh, yeah, he's a super person. Horse right there can walk a hole in the ground. Yep. That talent. You can take talent and develop it, and that's one that was developed. Right here is Top Gun Maverick and Bill Calloway for Bob Adcock. Now, right here is good show. Oh, that's a good show pleasure horse right there. Tell me about it. It's five and under to be. Callaway does a good job with their horses. They do, they do a really real good, good job. job. Mm -hmm. And they're another one that when you have a horse show, they're there. Yeah. And here, spotlight on Jose. I'm going to tell you, that right there, it's going to take some some doing to, to beat that horse. Yeah. He's good. You can see a big difference in between that horse and between his two-year year and his three-year sure year. Sure can. And I like to see that on a horse, oh. you know. Oh, when they step up that much from year to year? Yeah. You, you can't help but be happy. But Bob's got a good eye for Oh, well, he does. He got he, he's got some good help with the Callaways, too. Yeah. Getting it done. Nice horse. He gets a lot of views, I can tell you that. Right here's a country lineman in B.B. Beasley from Beth Beasley. Them girls is, is doing a real good job on showing horses. Oh, they, they can ride. They love it. That, that's the thing. They kind of remind me of that little baby coat. I watched them when they were little, <laughs> showing lead line, now they're up riding by themselves, you know. I mean, that's a, that's a wonderful thing to watch and to see. As they grow, yeah. tell me about it. Get better and better. That's one thing about this horse business. You can, I mean, you watch a lot of people grow up. 
You know, I never realized it, but in the last segment of this show, we're really going to show some age. Amateur Baron Gilded winner, uptight Jose and Bruce McDonald. That horse. I need to go back and, and start just checking and how many blue ribbons these horses have won through the years. Yeah. Because that one right there is a consistent one. Oh, yeah. You'll see him, and I cannot remember ever seeing him place lower than reserve. I mean, that, that's it. But now, these real good horses, I'm going to tell you, it, it, they got the talent. That's right. I remember the first time I saw Bruce ride. I, I didn't know he showed until I saw him show in Fedball one time. Amateur three-year-old Marin Gilded winner, Jose Showoff and Caress Hammond. I'm in Nancy Mayo. I'll tell you what, she, she's a good rider. She is a good she's rider. She's got good, good posture good on the horse. Yeah. Her equitation skills are super. I don't like to see that when somebody riding a horse. Oh, I do too. Caress uh, Hammerman can't get no better than that right there. And sideline. That's a nice horse right here. I will tell anybody, to me, Chad had one and now Kendra's on one sideline. This is the gateway to the walking horse industry and the show industry in my book. Yes. I wish more and more of them would advertise their flat shot horses because that's something people see. Anybody can ride that right there. Oh, yeah. Anybody. Here's Zorro Jr. and amateur stallion winner, and Beth Beasley. She was tickled to death with that. And that was a tough class now. It really was. With it, isn't oh, yeah, he is. It's the medalist. And right here, what can you say? I know, I tell you, this horse here was, was, was great. I thought <laughs> he, he, was. He, he made a terrific show. Eli done a, a super job on riding him and everything. And just to see the big smile on his granddaddy's <laughs> face sitting up in there. <laughs> He, and that stand, I mean. He, he, he loved it now. He loved, yeah. he loved it. I tried my best to get my grandkids into it, and they're more into ball. Baseball. Now, I football. figured out who's the head of that family, though. Grandmother. <laughs> Granny. Granny is the head. Eastbound and down, Shane Porterfield, your amateur owned and trained now, but people don't know this. That horse showed in the open division, too. Yeah. With, with Shane riding, so that that says a lot. Now here's an amateur owned and trained horse that showed twice uh -huh. in the performance division. Looking good too. Shane did a good job. On oh that yeah, horse. Shane did a good job on that horse. Right here is a Georgia Florida line and Tim Smith. Robert texted me about that horse and he did now. He looked outstanding. Yeah. And that was a Tim coming on out. Yeah. That's a nice horse. That horse there won a bunch of blue ribbons in his life. Oh, well, tell me about it. He had won a bunch. Everybody he's been with is yeah. a winner. Here's a kingpin, 15 to an under winner. Yeah. Bad cat, buddy. That's a nice horse. 
That's one of Bob's many good horses right there. Well, he ain't got a bad one, I can tell you that. Everything yeah. I've seen, his bones are good. Yeah. And, and that's rightfully so. Bob's a super good guy. Now, he really is. I liked him the first time I met him. And I ain't changed my pen. Oh, yeah. He, <laughs> I was watching a thing the other day on on YouTube TV there when his daughter showed his yeah. horse and won this celebration when he was sick, when Bob was sick. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't do it, so she jumped up there and yeah. did it. Mm -hmm. And he, he was just as tickled. Yep. And I like that horse right there. And right here, Gigi's Majestic, Elsie Brantford, and Savannah Martin he took the blue in the Amateur Amateur Pleasure Specialty. And this is another. Yeah. These horses are the gate. Oh, yeah. They're the ones that people out here watching look to see and say, well, man, I can do that. And that's what it's about, getting their kids in here, getting them started. Both of them, two good little riders, right? two good riders right there. You got that right. They can get it done. If you people just don't realize how important it is promoting our yeah. horse and get more people involved in our horse. Here he is, Cavender. Tim Smith, Bruce, and Robin McDonald. I'm gonna tell you, that state class ain't gonna be no whitewash this year, buddy. No, it won't. It's gonna, you're gonna earn it or you ain't gonna get it. And that horse right there? That's a good horse. Awfully good. Awfully good. And he just keeps getting better. Yep. Getting her done. Can't ask for nothing no better than that. No, you can't. You cannot. Sure can't. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got that. we got the fast showcase. And then uh, we're going to go to the smoke. We've got a couple from the Smokies that we're going to do. With honors. Armstrong, twisted with honors and Allison Armstrong, your amateur 50 and over winner. With honors. Number 940 in the blue ribbon circle here at the Smokies. That's a nice horse. Tell me about it. She said that when she first saw that horse, she just had to have it. One way or the other. Yeah. She, she a does good a good one. job riding it, too. Oh, yeah, she does. She presents it very well. She can ride. Allison's a super good lady. Yeah, she is. Right here is me and Pocahontas. Now, this was Allison Armstrong and Tyler Balkum, and here's the deal. They're undefeated in that pro-am. Yeah. And every time, it was unanimous. Every time they've showed in pro-am, it's been unanimous with the judges. Ask for anything any better than that. No, you can't. We got some great mares. Oh, yeah. We got some good mares out there. Right here's Cousin Bob and Shane Porterfield. Right here's another one. Yeah, that's a good horse. Good horse. Yeah. Bob 973 is second. That's a nice horse there. But they had, the, that, that was a tough class. Oh, there. yeah. I am Mighty Jose and Shane Porterfield, your 15 to an under winner. Shane got some real nice horses too. Tell me about it. He's got some real good ones. Yeah. That's it. 
Shane, Shane's a good rider. Oh yeah, Shane is a good rider. You know, he was sick for a while and couldn't much, yeah. too much showing, but now he's, he's come back with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. And here's your championship class, twisted with honors, who showed twice up there with the government yeah. all over him. That's what I like to see, a horse show twice, yeah. especially when the government's around. Mm -hmm. Says a lot for a horse, a lot for the trainer, a lot for the owner. Says a lot for all of us. You take us to a commercial. We'll be right back after these messages. Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, that, I'm gonna tell you, that's a, that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young, um, but now I tell you, got, all, got a lot of talent, that Hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse. But I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now, for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communications. More of What a Horse, coming up. All right. Now, I'm going to give credit where credit is due on this one. Uh, Facebook, Heidi Waddell. James Abernathy was looking for a video. Heidi Waddell said, check with Jerry Harris. Well, I said, I don't know. But after a couple hours of searching, this is what we came up with. We're going back to Tunica, 2005. 19 horses in here, people. 19. This was your amateur two-year-old Marion Gilding class. And I said 19. I'm not sure how many was in this class. I said 19. Pushover's Jazzy Lady won it with Bruce Vaughn in the saddle. She's Grandocious, Edith Dilday, The Magic Line, Caress Heineman, Tony Montana, Scarface with Debbie Williams. We're talking dollars. Molly Walker. Molly Delicious. Christy Lane. Sonny McCarter on that horse. Mm -hmm. Sister Maria. James Vernon. And Papa's Got a Secret. Jenna Hamilton finished out the ribbons, but that class was packed. The reason I'm showing this, I want people to look at what we had in 2005 and what we got now. Now, here's your two-year-old stallions. There was 19 in this class. Holy Phil and James Abernathy took the blue. Onk, onk, I don't know how you say that. Jackie McConnell was reserved. Assistant coach, Link Webb. Iceberg Show, Knox Blackbird. Watch My Jewels, Jimmy McConnell. The Night Pusher, Dick Peoples. Smoking Cash, Brock Tillman and Rusty Wallace. Harvey Rodriguez finished out the ribbon. But James Abernathy was the reason for this one.
Right there he is. Mm -hmm. James Abernathy, enjoy, big boy. <laughs> you won one heck of a class. Right here's a show pleasure amateur class. Now, this is another class that was packed full. Insomnia. And Keith Johnson took the blue in this. Zulu. Susan Latale. Dark Illusion. Red Strickland. A Rebel Without a Cause. Bob Babcock. I'm in like Flynn. Kay Thompson. Vigor and Valor. Gina Hamilton. I'm Medusa. Lynn Womack and G Major, Dr. Ralph Simulton finished out the ribbon. I want everybody to look at the size of these classes and look how much better our horses are today and then look at what we have to go through as inspection. Oh yeah. Now we complained about them back then because they they were they would get some that just unreal, but now I mean shoot. That was a huge class. That was a huge class. There's Susan coming around through there. But, you know, we don't see Susan anymore. We don't see Keith. Yeah. Right there is your winner. That was a good horse, too, buddy. Oh, yeah. And right here's your three-year-old Marin Gildens. This was another super good class. Hondo, Texas, and Steve Emmett took the blue. Hey, hey, ho, lay. Slow dancing, Knox Blackburn. Oh, hey, hey, ho, lay would give me a comp. Slow dancing, Knox Blackburn. Stargate, Link Webb. My final impression, Jerry Woodley. War Eagle Miss. Philip Trimble. He's a linebacker, Dick Peoples, and pushing Tunica. They just threw him in there for the heck of it. Yeah. Greg, Greg Mooningham. But I want y'all to look I at tell these you, classes. I like watching these classes like this and listen to the, some of the names that you don't hear yeah. no more and you know, and stuff like that. It just, I tell you, it just, I like watching these old videos. Well, I can remember being down there and talking to Wink Grouper when he was over the judges. And I'll never forget what he said because there was one class where several of the horses were doing kind of hitching. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, I'm fixing to go have a talk with them judges. I'm going to see if there's time to one that's hitching the yeah. best. <laughs> I like to crack up. <laughs> Like Mac Nickel on the rail there. Yeah. But these classes were full. And now. I think that was Wink on the rail because I know he's working with Stephen Inc. for, for Wink Rupert. Right. You, you're at that time. That would be. You are right. Yeah. You are right. All right. I want to remind everybody there have been classes added to the extravaganza youth, uh, park pleasure, and youth all day pleasure. That's a park performance. I'm not youth park performance and a youth all day pleasure. Those classes have been added in another flat shot class. So that's that's an important thing to know. Yes. You might wanna we, we might we we might come up with something to put in there. Yep. I don't know what it'd be, but maybe. <laughs>
get, get a kid to ride it. <laughs> That's right. Find a, somebody that just wants to show a horse and say, let's go to it. They might find a way to, the way the government's doing now, though, they may find a way to turn a flat shot horse down. It doesn't surprise me. That's one thing I, I do want to say is the trainers, video your horses. If you're turned down, demand to know why your horse is being turned down and video them showing you the data. It is needed very badly. Yeah. Heidi Waddell did a fantastic job of getting a video that is very helpful on one of these situations where they're turning down a horse that in all honesty shouldn't have been turned yeah. down. Yeah. But this video and the data is important for the lawsuit. It's important for our future. And I mean, anybody can video. Just take your phone, turn it sideways, and video. You can use your fingers to pull up close, zoom in, zoom out, and your phone will record the voice. No problem. Then you can download it and give it to the people who are helping with the lawsuit. This is, this is just, it, I mean, it's important. Oh yeah, it, it's very important. It, it's very important to get that done. And I advise anybody to, you taking a horse up to an inspection to, to do it. Yep, and I, I had one gentleman that he got one and they got some great video by zooming in between the horse's legs and had the VMO trying to separate hair so, so hard, pressing down so hard trying to that her hands slipped clean off the horse. I mean, they're not supposed to be separate. They're supposed to be palpating. Uh, yeah, For them right. to do that, that's just, that's wishful thinking. And when they can't find it, they'll come up with something. We need the data, the industry needs the data, and it doesn't take that much to do it. So video, show your horses, video, you want it. I'll help you, call me. I mean, I'll stand there with you and show you how. Something that we need to get done. We got a shows coming up. Inspect, video your inspections. Yep, you're right. Well, I guess that's it for this week. But video. That's all I can say. Go to the shows, video your horses, and help any way you can. It's important for our future, and it doesn't take that much to do. See y'all like next week. Be safe. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. I got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, What a horse! I know they're talking about me, of course, and I'm gonna be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking. Thank you.